The railing there surrounds on three sides the area known as the Führer's Kanzel, the Führer's Podium, and that's where Hitler stood. And that's where tourists to this day stand. Others like me can't actually bring themselves to go there. I'm, I'm not being oversensitive, I don't think. I just don't like, it's in the same way I'm not very good at picking up guns. I can do it occasionally, but I don't think I want to put myself in that position. And I don't want to, I don't want to hedge around here. I am deeply uncomfortable in Nuremberg talking about Wagner. I realize how close to the, to the Nazi fantasy world Wagner was and how deeply stitched into Hitler's vision of the world. Um, it's, it's very difficult. I, I have to keep reminding myself, and I do it best by simply listening to the music, how unbelievably complicated, ambiguous, emotionally honest, raw, revolutionary, anti-fascist Wagner truly is. I suppose I think of it like this. Imagine a great, beautiful silk tapestry of infinite colour and complexity that has been stained indelibly. It's still a beautiful tapestry of miraculous workmanship and gorgeous colour and silken texture. But that stain is real, and I'm afraid Hitler and Nazism have stained Wagner. For some people, that stain ruins the whole work. For others, it is just something you have to to face up to. And here's a place as storm clouds gather in Nuremberg. Here's a place to think about such things, I suppose. The link between Wagner's music and the odious extravaganzas staged here is bad enough. Worse still are the stories of it being used as a psychological weapon in the concentration camps.